everybody, this is Nia Fana and I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology Message. This time, September 18th to the end of the month, 2022, we're going to talk about the Fall Equinox, Spring Equinox in the Southern Hemisphere, and we're going to talk about the sky and how it affects all of us, all zodiac signs. We're going to talk about the new moon in Libra and everybody in the sky that is joining in to that new moon and how it will affect our energy. So let's begin by saying that we're coming from a time of a lot of personal changes, inner changes. This is not a time of a feeling of victimization so much anymore because of what ev of everything that is happening and the changes that are happening too fast in our lives, but more of a time of uh, enhancement and empowerment and understanding that our inner strength counts for something it's about taking responsibility. It's about understanding our role in standing up to, their, to the challenges in front of us, both personal and collective, and changing things. It's a sense of hope and belief that there is a way, if there is a will, to accompany it. And that's something that can be very creative and very utopic, but something that could be misleading as well. Nevertheless, if we remain um, sound and, and, and realistic at this time, this is a time of great achievements and changes, positive ones, if we are to do the work. So, as the sun moves out of the trine to Pluto slowly, and Mercury moves into an opposition with Jupiter again, Neptune was at its closest uh, to Earth a week and a half ago. Jupiter is in a week and a half from now. So there's a lot of utopic energy in the sky when it comes to Jupiter and, uh, and Neptune. This is the romantic, hopeful, sometimes lethargic and unrealistic energy that I was talking about, and when it opposes Mercury again, which is in retrograde, we could have thoughts of omnipotence. Believe that we have the time, the money, the strength to take care of everything and everyone, to spend on everything and everyone. We could even say things that later we might wish we didn't say, say or say differently or at a different time. So play it cool. <laughs> and as uh, Uranus is heading into a trine with Venus, and Venus is part of this new moon in Libra that we're going to head into on the 25th, and uh, it's in a conjunction with Mercury in retrograde and in a trine to uh, Pluto as well later on, great changes in Venusian ways are ahead of us. So Venus is in charge of how we perceive ourselves, our self-esteem, self-value, everything that composes it, our relationships, the parts we play within those relationships, whether they're personal, romantic, work relationships, or social relationships. It is also about how we sustain and provide for ourselves in our lives, whether it is emotional sustainment, susten uh, sustenance or physical materialistic sustenance as well. So it talks about our relationship with money and income. And through all these places, we are in a time that can bring great change, evolution, upgrade, if you are in relationships, whatever kind of relationship, work, personal, whatever kind of relationship, think well before you disassemble them now. Think if you can transform them together. Think if you can alter them in a way that would take them up a notch instead of disassembling them and moving on. If you're not, this is a time that you could go into one's personal work, doesn't matter. This is a great time to meet new people in that sense, but not see only the utopic romantic side in them or in the ventures you are going into. As we are in a Mercury retrograde, almost in the Kazemi soon, and Venus is opposing Neptune, again making us wanna believe. We want to believe, okay? And that belief 
gives us strength up to a certain point. After that, it's an illusion and it will be our downfall. So don't think that your beliefs will save you from reality, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah, and we're heading into um, this square again of Saturn and Uranus, and this affects us collectively and this affects us personally. The new, the upgraded, on the one hand, Uranus, on the other hand, the old and established and crumbling. There's a war between the two, both in our personal lives and in our collective arenas, geopolitics, economy, um, politic arenas. The pillars of the earth are shaking because they need to be upgraded. We still rely on the old, but we are in dire need of the new. And we can feel it in our personal lives as well. On the 23rd, we are having a, a Kazemi, a Mercury Kazemi, conjunct the sun, a great time to be in meditation or do a little ceremony or just, you know, think about where you want to be through the next three months, what you want to do, how you want to see your environment around you. What part do you want to play in it? How do you want to move through your social arena? Um... And then on the 25th, we're having this new moon in the second degree of Libra, conjunct Mercury, conjunct Venus, trining Pluto, and, and you could say also opposing Neptune. A lot of creative, utopic, hopeful energy there that can give us the strength to believe there is a will, there is a way, there's light coming in. It's not arbitrary, the changes we're going through and the hardship we're going through. But this is a Mercury retrograde playing in there, so things might go the total other way, you know, opposite of what we calculated things would be. And we really have to be very flexible with our minds now. And understand that sometimes the opposite is the truth. You know, Lakota, which I love, a Native uh, American, Lakota, the Lakota nation, and, and they say that if you are in trouble, try doing the opposite if you are fighting with your wife try telling her loving words if you are angry try dancing with happiness if you are resentful try being thankful and do that for a while and see if it works see if it heals and that was a gift from the waki and tanka thunder beings given to the lakota great wisdom um, and being flexible at this time may prove us, um, may prove to us that there's a better answer than what we saw before. Um, nevertheless, all that energy can be misdirected and can be misleading. But as long as you're realistic and sound, it could be the building blocks of great change. At the same time, exactly, we are having a trine between the planet of male energy, Mars, and Saturn, the old teacher, giving that Mars a strategic quality, the ability to take its chin up, look straight, and do what it needs to do responsibly. And when we're talking about the fall equinox coming in the 22nd the 23rd it's about taking a responsibility and doing the work because winter is coming in it's not the time to be negligent or hopeful that others would do the work it is a time to harness your strength and give your part in helping yourself and your community not starve through winter. And when we're talking about the Southern Hemisphere, this is a time to open up and bloom. This is a time to rekindle the lights of relationships and love. Very playful and romantic time. And as we're heading into the end of the month with Venus uh, trining Pluto, heightening the changes, Mars trining Saturn, and Jupiter um, opposing the Sun, it's closest to Earth, 
again try and and keep feelings of omnipotence at bay and do changes more mildly with baby steps and strategically not abruptly um, I think this is everything I had to say. Of course, some free for readings or courses or private lessons. You have everything at the slide at the end. I'd be very happy to hear from you. And I want to thank you for being yourselves and not being victims anymore of things that are happening to you and around you. And I want you uh, to be proud of yourself for answering these challenges in an ethical and, 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 and kind way. A way of gentle strength and love, not anger and resentment. Of spreading love and light against all the darkness that we see outside. Understanding that that darkness resides within us and once we let it in and answer that darkness with the same unkindness and resentment, we are just part of that cloud, not the sun anymore. So, May we all live long and prosper. Mitakoyo yasin. This is Nia Fider. Goodbye.